And in this clip, we will continue our discussion on the coupon collector's problem. In the previous uh, segment, we asked uh, how you're going to model this uh, coupon collector as the balls and bins experiment. Okay, so I, I hope everyone have uh, come up with this. It's not that hard, but you have to think about what are the balls and what are the bins in this case. Okay, so in this case, uh, uh, we are throwing in balls, right? So these are, this is like, um, so exactly the, the phrase here kind of mis misleads you a little bit. So we basically, when we perform one experiment, we pick a coupon at random. So it is like we are throwing a ball into one bin, right? One random bin. So in order to come up with the same uh, uh, parameter as the... Uh, coupon collector problem so we have n bins so this correspond to coupons and we want to throw say k balls in it okay so balls are boxes of candies okay so op you open a box you know which bin you landed in right so bins are coupons okay so the event that we are interested in is that we get all the coupons, right? So in this case, it's like we all bins are non-empty. Right, the first time, right? So the random variable, uh, the random variable that the variables we want to analyze is, so let's say, let's call it x. So the random variable x is equals to the number of balls that we throw before until no until all bins are non empty. So that's the uh, correspondence between the coupon collectors and the balls and bin experiment all right so now we want to analyze this we want to analyze basically we want to analyze this uh, random variable x okay we want to find its expectation basic uh, essentially so let's uh, try to think about this and clearly you can try to uh, work on it directly and it's hard to just analyze uh, x directly so um, so let's try to think about how the random experiment progress and and we'll try to come up with a way to analyze x in such a way that uh, they are easier to think about so when you have large uh, uh, complicated uh, process like this it might be easier to break down this process into smaller ones as in when we did with the the uh, empty bins uh, analysis but this this one will be different, a kind of different. So, so let's try to think about uh, this random experiment. So the first ball you you throw into one bin, right? So let's do it. So one bin, get one ball here. Okay. All right. So this is a new bin, right? So it's a new bin. Okay. Now uh, we throw another another ball. Okay. So since there are like one already non-empty bin, right? And there are six empty bins. This is very likely that we throw into these uh, six bins, right? But there's some chance that we are really unlucky and throw into this 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 bin. Now let's try to be uh, pretend to be lucky, okay? So I throw another ball and then I throw into this, right? So this again I hit a new bin. So this is kind of good for me, right? Let's do it again. Uh, now um, there are two out of uh, four. So maybe uh, I'm 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 lucky again. So I hit this this bin. Okay. Now there are fifty percent chance that I I don't hit the the new bin, right? So maybe uh, the fourth ball I I hit this one. Okay. Now I'm I'm at the same roughly the same condition as previously before uh, that uh, I have uh, three three uh, bad bins and three good bins right then I throw it again so maybe I'm lucky now so I fall into this bin 
and I get to hit a new bit. Okay. Now the situation changed a little bit, right? Because now I have uh, how many good bins do I have left? Uh, there are only three, and out of out of seven bins. So maybe uh, if I throw another ball, I'll end up here. I throw another ball, maybe I'll end up here. Right, and the third ball give me lucky, so I fall into this bin. Now I have uh, how many bins do I have? I have five non-empty bins. Okay, then. This time the situation changed again. I have uh, two good bins, right? This one and that one. And the probability that I'm gonna hit this bin is getting a little bit lower, right? Now let's try to perform some non-random experiment. So I throw another ball, I get into this. I'm unlucky. I'm th throw another ball, I get into this. I throw another ball, right? Oh, now this time I'm lucky. I fall into this bin. Okay, and I get to hit a new bin, right? And and finally, uh, the situation changed again for the probably the last time, right? I have uh, seven bins. And only one. There's only one bin that I can I need to hit. Okay, so now I'm I'm uh, yeah. Let's let's throw some balls. I hit this one. Oh sorry, hit that one. Sorry, hit that one. Sorry, hit that one. Oh I'm sorry. And finally, I, I'm gonna, oh, maybe let's hit that one again. And finally, I hit this bin. And I'm done. Right? So this, this is kind of how, how the game progress. Right? How the random experiment progress. And, uh, the question is, how can we break it down? Right? So that we can analyze these, uh, the whole experiment as something, uh, simpler and, and easier to analyze. If you go back and try to look at uh, what I have done, you can see that there are cases that uh, somehow I give some hint for you to think about how to break this uh, big random experiment down, right? So let's uh, look at some hinting questions. I'm not going to give you the answer now, but uh, I hope this helped you to, uh, to try to structure your thinking and, and you come up with the way to analyze so what we want to do is to get to analyze the expected value of x. And our main tool will be linearity expectation as always. Uh, so you have to break x down into uh, some something that you can analyze. All right. So uh, in this example, the hardest part, okay, is to hit this last bin. Okay. So let's try to focus on that for a minute. So this question talk about, um, so if we have already hit, the, so the last step occur, occurs when uh, you hit, already hit n minus 1 different coupons, okay? So the question is, the, what's, if we buy a new box, what's the probability that we're going to get to the last coupon, okay? And if this, you have figured out this, maybe you can try to answer this, okay? So given that we have just got this n minus 1 different coupons, what is the expected number of balls that we have to buy, uh, the boxes that we have to buy to get all the last coupons? So you can think of this as uh, if you hit already hit um, n minus one bins, right? And it, this one is like uh, the probability that the next bin, next ball hit last bin. Okay. And this one is the same as uh, how many times, how many balls, balls, you need to get to hit the last bin. Okay, so if you want to talk about in terms of balls and bin experiment, okay. All right, and and with this, uh, this is the last probably the last step, right? And we can try to go back a little bit and think about the case when you have already got n minus one coupon. We can ask the same questions, right? So what's the probability that you're going to hit the new uh, n minus, minus 1 uh, coupons, okay? And how many, how many balls, how many, how many boxes, how many balls that we have to buy, have we have to throw in, so that we're going to get, we're going to hit the next uh, n minus 1 uh, 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 bins, right? And this you can also ask, like, how many, how many, 
for the first bin right and the second bin right right if you keep ask, asking this uh, maybe you can come up with a way to analyze this expected value of x okay so this question is pretty much open ended for you because i'm not going to give you so so much hint but uh but you if you try thinking about it hard enough i hope you might come up with the the answer but if you don't i will i will provide more hints at some later times okay have fun solving this problem